in Nepal, mud houses also took casualties. Okay, why I'm saying this is because they incorporated stones at the higher levels, and those stones, when they fall down, kill people. So mud houses do not kill people because even though it crumbles down, it powders, it comes down. It doesn't kill people. It is safe at a mass level. But uh, at higher levels, one should not use those higher, stronger structures. So in the same way, when you're using lime, lime is an exit, uh, cement and uh, lime, uh, mud. The expansion and the contraction of uh, lime is similar to that of mud. So therefore, if you use for uh, plastering or for waterproofing, you use uh, lime on mud, it stays. Whereas if you use cement on mud, which normally villagers are doing now, it, it peels off because it develops the gap between the, the, because of the differential contraction and expansion. So I, we have this building in the front. The whole thing is exposed to the rain for the uh, the summer rains that we get from the east. So we get a huge splash on it. So we've plastered it, you can see that. Uh, that has survived uh, on a mud wall, a uh, full, uh, what do you call this, uh, lime plaster. It's not been full, we just put one, one layer. One, yeah. We have to put another two, three layers, two layers at least. So that is the advantage of working with lime. So <clears throat> another thing is uh, cost of cement buildings. Uh, in the cities, and most people actually spend most of their earnings for building house. Okay. Uh, like he was saying, Anjana and Anjana were saying that when we build the house, uh, this, this building, the architects who were, who were given us a line of now, that right construction estimate, <coughs> told us that, uh, gave us an estimate for this kind of building for in, in that year, 2007, of 51 lakhs. And we didn't have that kind of building. So we had to build something else. Therefore, we were able to do this for approximately three lakhs. The, the whole um, the, the building, the, except for the roof, 80% of the cost went to the roof and the back. The rest of it was mud and building uh, So we had to do that. That we were able to save our Sorry? So this all budget three lakhs is managed material. Yes. So this is uh, how we have uh, what do you call it built this place. So therefore, the cost of building up a lot of people because of moving towards uh, cement kind of buildings are spending most of their money in building it when they can. We do not need always need such hard material to build their houses. Uh, why? The technical reason is the following. See, we have, uh, we, what is our uh, most <coughs> common building material uh, up till now? Now we're moving to the box. But it's normally bricks, right? Burnt bricks. Burnt brick is a, uh, is a comparatively soft masonry unit. And then we have another uh, using this money. I uh, mean, this. You're using these uh, relatively softer masonry units, and you use a very hard material in between. Well, cement, Portland cement. Now, and every building moves because of heat, because of earth movements, because of different reasons, every building moves. And if you have a very hard material, it actually damages your masonry units. Whereas a softer mortar will actually allow that movement to take place and allow this masonry unit to retain its situation. So therefore, these mason, masonry units, we do not want, we want the wall to survive, not our mortar. We don't want our, uh, what do you call, walls to collapse. <coughs> so therefore, these mortars are very accommodating. 
they are soft mortars and they are very accommodating for the structures that we build. We do not really need such hard and rigid and stiff uh, mortars to build a lot of structures. And especially in areas where we can and we have space to build things. Uh, of course, uh, as you know, I mean, do you, you know how we came up with this uh, Portland cement? I don't think that's the thing. No. Some Frenchman who first started, the first place where they started making cement was Portland. So that's how, <coughs> yeah. It was basically a, a result of military. Because military needs hard stuff. They need fast building things. Especially during the First and the Second World War. So because they needed fast building things, they made this rigid things. They are uh, very hard materials, stiff materials, good materials, but they are not durable. Just like we have, uh, you know, clothing, uh, buildings, I mean, anything that we are mass manufacturing at the mass level, it's all a product of military activity, including, uh, what do you call it, urea. Yes. Mm -hmm. Urea, haber, yeah. phosphorus, <coughs> Chemicals. Yeah. The chemicals what they use for warfare. Yeah, they were actually want nitrogen bombs. So similarly also, this is a part of the military activity that was produced. So therefore, these are not meant actually for civilian use. Now when you're building very stiff and upright buildings, you know, skyscrapers, and all, you would need such a material. But in a lot of areas, you don't need such strong materials to use. Uh, softer will do better. They perform better and it will protect your wall and your masonry units. So that's one of the reasons that, and the cost effect, it's cost effective and it is durable, but it requires everything needs a maintenance. So this helps in the maintenance also. You can maintain these things. I'll come to this a little later.